सो हेलो बच्चो सत श्री अकाल नमस्ते फ्रॉम माय साइड हाउ आर यू ऑल सो दिस इज इंद्रजीत सिंह वेलकमिंग यू ऑल इन टू द मोस्ट सेंसिबल प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर इन एक्सपीरियंस दो आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर एवरीथिंग बिकॉज पीडब्ल्यू इज बॉक्स ऑफ सरप्राइजेज एंड वी आर एक्सपांडिंग इन टू द हॉराइजन मल्टीपल हॉराइजन राइट सो बोम 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 वी आर इन टू एन डी ए वी आर इन टू जे नीट द स्पेशल फैक्ट्स वाला इज गोइंग ऑन एन सी आर टी इज गोइंग ऑन स्लोली 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 वी आर राइट एक्सपांडिंग इन टू द मल्टीपल रीजनल लैंग्वेजेस लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स आर गोइंग टू लाइक पी डब्ल्यू इज हैविंग द लॉट्स ऑफ सरप्राइजेस बोम बोम सो गाइज ओके सो वी हैव रीच टू द थर्बल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ बैटर we have reached up to the thermal properties of matter so what does it states the thermal properties of matter states that <coughs> till now see again i am uh, uh, in the beginning of the average session i used to deliver right the flow of this syllabus again i am going to do the same thing uh the uh, the physics syllabus starts from 11th standard that is uh, whenever we are dealing with the kinematics 1d and 2d obviously we used to deal with the uh, the motion but without cause when we reached up to the newton's law of motion work energy and power and the rotational motion uh, okay before rotational motion okay in nlm and work energy and power we were dealing with the cause we were dealing with the energy and we were analyzing the motion till sixth chapter configuration of the particles were not considered from now onwards from 7th chapter the configuration the integral configuration the shape of the rigid body is also considered and motion is analyzed slowly 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 it went on the gravitation and after that whether the solids those who are included into the motion are showing the elastic behavior are they showing the elastic behavior yes or no possibility there is a possibility so we deal with the solids after that we move on to the different domains that is fluids now this time it is all about the gas gas the thermal properties of matter contains the three most important chapter the first one that completely is uh, that, that that is having the modes of the heat transfer the fundamentals of the heat transfer the temperature scales the cases of the faulty thermometers how expand solids when heat are supplied to them the next chapter will be uh, right on the kinetic theory of gases and the thermodynamics okay uh, i am going to combine all of those okay the kinetic theory of gases and the thermodynamics i am going to combine those okay so don't get worried it will be the long lecture but both will be included into that and after that obviously the two parts of the 11th syllabus are remaining into the victory batch that is what the shmn waves so i think we should uh, begin let's start with before moving on to the thermal properties of matter right we have to deal with in this chapter right just hold on okay this chapter is all about the heat transfer okay lots of things we are going to discuss okay we are going to discuss in this session specifically we are going to discuss about the temperature scales the fundamentals of the heat transfer heat transfer is nothing else but the thermal properties of matter <coughs> the fundamentals of the heat transfer right after that we are moving forward to the principle of calorimetry after that we will move on right to the modes of the heat transfer and before that expansions in solid
right there are basically three modes of heat transfer radiation conduction and convection convection is having the very least part radiation okay in which some laws are there stephens law wien's displacement law right and in the conduction series and parallel connection and the rate of the heat flow okay so the entire heat transfer it is concluded into this it starts from the very basic term that is temperature scales and the case of the faulty thermometers we are going to discuss that part into the detail but first of all okay okay let's i think we should start with the temperature scales temperature scales now in this entire chapter we are going to deal with the heat we are going to deal with the thermal energy right so for them uh, right the temperature plays plays a pivot role it holds a prominent position obviously it's all about right the state variables that we are going to deal into the upcoming chapter someone some specific area i got to cut right okay wo yaad kar raha hai kata so if we are dealing with the thermal energy see when we were dealing with the mechanical work forces were involved those were mechanical forces when we were dealing with an energy obviously mechanical conservative and non conservative forces were involved similarly when we are dealing with the different form of energy that is a thermal energy so obviously in that case i must say yes the not forces but uh, the sum of the physical quantities are involved among them the prominent one is a temperature temperature scales in the entire chapter we are going to deal with the three kind of the temperature scale the first one right that is the kelvin scale the second one right that is a celsius scale right third one fahrenheit scale some of the uh, conversions of the temperature scales right how uh, the kelvin can be converted or the celsius can be converted see temperature into the kelvin that is is equal to temperature into the celsius plus 273 right this is the most important conversion uh, that we are going to have in this chapter okay temperature into the fahrenheit that is is equal to 9 by 5 temperature into the celsius plus 32 again the second most important conversion that we are going to have right but from the exam point of view from the je need point of view i am not saying into the need that is going to come upon that uh, this is a 30 degree centigrade and you have to convert into the kelvin okay then student is going to have a thought wow physics is so easy sir they are uh, right asking us the question about the temperature scales and the respective conversations wow boom physics is easy nta is cool now you are going to become a doctor okay they went on one survey okay after this suddenly hit it into my mind that went on one survey okay regarding a specific subject physics okay or regarding one subject not physics but let's say regarding one subject right okay thousands of students were present and in front of them questions were posed which subject seems to be quite arrogant which subject seems to be quite irritating to you all one student sir i want to answer this sir physics how entire physics is hell completely irritating so they want uh, they they want to be into the roots of his psychology so the person who was the panel who was sitting in front is cast so uh, uh, what part of the physics you like most irritating among all so those three chapters irritating okay among those three chapters what is the most irritating part for you so those three concepts
So among those three concepts, again those panelists asked him, right? Among those three concepts, right? Which was is the most critical or what that expression, the statement, the derivation, which thing is a quite crucial for you, sir, that those three words. So as because of those three words, entire physics appears to be horrible, irritating to the student. Same thing happens when one question appears easy in front of us, na, right? Immediately within 10 to 15 seconds, we are going to be the doctor. And the same, right, on the very next moment, if the difficult questions comes up in front, na, okay, immediately we'll have a thought that we are going to leave up the need, okay, and we have to find uh, some else path for our career. There is some else career path. This happens. This is a, right, uh, a, a common uh, psychology and the myth of a teenager. Okay. So what is going to, sorry for uh, this time. So what is going to come upon into the need? Okay. With the temperature scales, right? Lots of questions, right? Okay. With this examples are associated. First of all, we are going to move forward with the very fundamentals of the heat transfer. The fundamentals, see, there is example in front. The glass rod and the metal rod the glass rod and the metal rod what happens here right both are kept in contact with the fire after some amount of the time something happened to the glass rod after some amount of the time okay something happened to the metal rod but the situations are different, okay, the parameters are different, the applications are different. So, whatever the output that are results that are going to come out from this activity, right, they are going to be different. How glass rod will react to the fire? Okay, students might be having thousands of questions into the mind. Sir, you gave us an example, but actually, right, okay, we were having the thousands of questions into the mind. Not thousand, but exactly plenty number of the questions are right now scrolling, doom, 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 doom into the mind. <laughs> Why metal rod? reacts differently as compared to glass rod what happened to glass rod how heat transfer took place Sorry for that. If you are feeling less energized, that Indraji sir is quite less energized. I heartily apologize, but because I am not well, right? I am not well. So, so far as that, that reason, I am doing so. Right? So, how glass rod will react as compared to the metal rod? Okay. Whether uh, the temperature difference is going to occur or not, how they are going to re react? Okay. Lots of questions will be there into your mind. This all are answered, right? Using the Okay, this all will be answered and we will understand all of those concepts and we are going to answer all of those questions one by one. I am not going to answer all of your questions specifically, but while understanding the concept, okay, immediately you will have a trigger, you will have any click, yes, I got an answer of my specific question. Okay, so this is all about the basics of the heat transfer. Right, this is all uh, the basics of the heat transfer. Okay. 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 Now let's move on to the next concept that is the 
right temperature scales and after that the cases of the faulty thermometers right the cases of the faulty thermometers yes or no okay so in this case right a simple thing that we are going to define okay the simple 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 thing that we are going to define okay that faulty thermometer sums are asked into the examination okay in which see basically lots of types of thermometers are there right the gas thermometers are there mercury thermometer is there okay long uh, list of the classification is there. we are not moving on to that part okay we are moving on to that specific approach through which the questions are asked there is a possibility for a specific question to come up into an examination okay this is the actual thermometer right okay this is the actual thermometer obviously the actual thermometer right is having the two point the first one it is known as the lowermost point and the second one that is known as the uppermost point for the mercury thermometer the lowermost point is always 0 degree centigrade and the uppermost point is the 100 degree centigrade 100 degree centigrade is a boiling point of the water and 0 degree point is centigrade is a melting point of an ice this is an actual thermometer and in case of the faulty thermometers right okay every thermometer is having its respective lowermost and the uppermost point right this is an actual thermometer and this is the faulty thermometer now what is an actual difference between them here whatever the reading you are getting is an actual the correct one same thing as because of error if if if, if some uh, error occurred into the thermometer right then reading will get change and you are going to get the faulty reading how you are going to correct it how you are going to identify that part okay that we are going to see using the concept of the temperature scales that we are going to see using the concept of the temperature scales for all temperature scales i am going to write down one thing reading minus lowermost point whole divided by uppermost point minus lowermost point is always constant reading minus lowermost point whole divided by uppermost point right this is constant for all temperature scales right this is constant for all temperature scales yes or no this is constant for all temperature scales reading minus lowermost point whole divided by uppermost point minus lowermost point okay for all temperature scales reading minus lowermost point right now how using this simple formula we are going to solve the all of those cases of the faulty thermometers right but into the fundamentals of the uh, right into the fundamentals of the heat transfer apart from this faulty thermometers right okay first of all i am going to show you all one example here right and after that we are going to see some different examples right after uh, like some amount of the time okay for uh, we will discuss this for all of those fundamentals part first and then we'll again come back to the the number of the questions okay now see here what happens suppose the actual thermometer right gives the reading of 35 degree centigrade what will be the reading and the respective error okay into the faulty thermometer right I'm sorry, yaar. Into the case of the faulty thermometer where the lowermost point, right, is 5 degree centigrade, uppermost point is 95 degree centigrade. What will be its reading? 
सो ये टू काइंड ऑफ दी थर्मोमीटर आर कंपेयर द फर्स्ट वन दैट इज एन एक्चुअल थर्मोमीटर द सेकेंड वन दैट इज अ फॉल्टी थर्मोमीटर इन दी एक्चुअल थर्मोमीटर राइट इन द एक्चुअल थर्मोमीटर वॉट हैपन्स राइट सी रीडिंग माइनस लोअर मोस्ट पॉइंट होल डिवाइडेड बाय अपर मोस्ट पॉइंट माइनस लोअर मोस्ट पॉइंट इज इक्वल टू कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर ऑल कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर ऑल टेम्परेचर स्केल्स right then how we are going to compare the scales for the two thermometers this is 35 for the regular thermometer the lower most point is 0 upper most point is 100 lower most point is 0 for the faulty thermometer the reading r we need to calculate minus lower most point is 5 that is 95 minus 5 <coughs> 35 by 100 r minus 5 by 90 right so 35 into 9 by 10 that is is equal to r minus 5 5 2 za 5 7 za 7 9 za 63 by 2 is equal to r minus 5 right r is equal to 63 plus 10 whole divided by 2 that is 73 by 2 r that is is equal to okay uh, 36.5 degree centigrade the actual reading was 35 but the same into the case of the faulty thermometer the reading is 36.5 degree centigrade okay this is how the cases of the faulty thermometers the question based on this are asked into an examination right slowly 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 we are going to see on to that let's move on to the next fundamental part that is the specific heat latent heat right the amount of the heat required to raise the temperature by 1 degree centigrade or 1 kelvin is the specific heat and its respective specific heat capacity see you can see one example an object is immersed inside the fluid okay suppose the heat is continuously supplied to an object right the temperature of the object is going to get change the temperature of the object it is going to get change so in that case what happens what actually happens whatever the amount of the heat that is needed to raise the temperature by 1 degree or 1 kelvin that is specific heat its classification molar specific heat gram specific heat <coughs> amount of the heat required to raise the 1 mole by 1 degree centigrade or 1 kelvin to raise the temperature of the 1 mole of the substance by 1 degree centigrade or the 1 kelvin that is the molar specific heat gram specific heat to raise the temperature of the 1 gram of substance by 1 degree centigrade or 1 kelvin that is the gram specific heat right that is nothing else but the gram specific heat right that is nothing else but the gram specific heat so what happens here it's a very simple statement that we are going to deliver in front what happens here okay see <laughs> this is the specific heat generally uh, we are have to deal with the two kind of uh, the specific heat and the specific heat capacity right okay the formula of the specific heat is like this way okay there are some specific heat the specific heat of the water is there specific heat of the ice is there specific heat of the steam is there lots of values are there okay that we are going to see into the temperature versus right a uh, time scale don't get worried now after this this is just a fundamental small 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 definitions we are discussing after that the more most important thing uh, that is going to come upon as the principle of the calorimetry and then temperature versus time graph okay the next thing is the latent heat
amount of heat needed for the right state transformation per unit mass for per unit mass how much amount of the heat we can add so that it can transform its states from solid to liquid it can transform its states from liquid to gas that is latent heat l that is is equal to amount of heat needed per unit mass latent heat that is amount of heat needed per unit mass <coughs> 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 sorry for that i'm extremely sorry uh, I'm, I'm extremely sorry i'm just holding up right sorry sorry students actually i was not well i am not well but still uh, it was declared that lecture needs to be go right live on this so it was important to record that okay hi heartily apologize at some moment if you are feeling that indrajit sir is not as much easy at what we are thinking i heartily apologize for that right okay now latent heat so this was a very simple definition of it latent heat of fusion is that latent heat of the vaporization is that okay uh okay one a latent heat is needed to convert it from to transform from solid to liquid and another it from liquid to glass now what is heat supply right heat supply is done from the external source right or in another sense we can say instead of external source the best reason to explain that part right generally it is not only from the external source this is one of the reason that is supplying the heat second as of temperature difference also as of temperature difference also heat flows heat flows in another sense the heat supply let us take an example suppose this is uh, the metallic rod i am talking about okay this is the metallic rod the one side of the metallic rod is at the 0 degree centigrade the another side of the metallic rod is at the 100 degree centigrade so obviously the heat supply okay the heat flows from higher temperature to the lower temperature right heat flows from the higher temperature to the lower temperature right this is also a the indirect heat supply but it is a heat supply so in this chapter entirely we are going to deal with the two types of the heat supply the first one that is directly supplied from the external source or second as because of the temperature difference heat is flowing from one point to the another one okay either heat is supplied from the external source or as because of the temperature difference the heat is flowing from one point to the another point right now here comes uh, the most important stuff right here comes uh, the most important stuff of this chapter right that is principle of calorimetry maximum number of the questions are asked into an examination based on this concept principle of calorimetry what does it states it is a very simple but right the harsh questions are asked into an examination basis on this when two substances are miss when two substances are missed right so what happens when two substances are mixed right let us take an example ice mixed with water right water mixed with steam third ice mixed with 
in all of those cases the substance that is at the higher temperature it is going to release the heat and the substance that is at the lower temperature it is going to gain some heat simple okay so the principle of calorimetry states that the principle of calorimetry right states that whatever the heat that is gain by the substance at uh, the lower temperature is same heat right that is a loss by the substance at the higher temperature The principle of calorimetry states that if ice is mixed with the water, ice is at the lower temperature, water is at the high temperature, water will release some heat, ice will accept it. So heat loss by the higher temperature, right, okay, will the same amount of the heat will be the same amount of the heat that is accepted by the, the substance that is at the lower temperature that is gained by the substance at the lower temperature. Heat Gain by the, if the water and steam is at mixed, then obviously the steam is at the higher temperature. So here the heat that is gained by the water at the lower temperature is the same amount that is released by the steam that is at the high temperature. This process of heat transfer occurs for long amount of the time. This process of the heat transfer occurs for the long amount of the time. So in that case, what happens? Okay. So in that case, what happens if this process occurs for long amount of the time? So at an end, equilibrium is attained in which the final temperatures of the both substances will become equal and this kind of the equilibrium it is known as the thermal equilibrium this kind of the equilibrium it is known as what thermal equilibrium so basically how many kinds of the equilibriums are there this thing all you are aware of right if mechanical forces are balanced then it is an equilibrium if thermal energies the final temperatures of the systems are balanced then it is a thermal equilibrium if no reactions occur then we are saying they are into the chemical equilibrium if three of the equilibriums are satisfied we can say the systems are in the thermodynamic equilibrium this type of the equilibrium again we are going to see into the upcoming chapter okay this kind of the equilibrium again we are going to see into the upcoming chapter yes or no guys okay on the basis of the principle of the calorimetry right and the temperature scales we are going to see some of the sums right okay this is a very fundamental part huh very 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 fundamental part very simple definitions all of those see why i'm not discussing uh, uh, the many definitions now because those are written into the book okay things are quite easy and they are uh, right uh, inappropriate and just uh, right inappropriate to discuss it now because maximum number of the questions are coming on from this concepts only on a new scale of the temperature which is linear and called the w scale the freezing and boiling points are 39 and 239 what will be the temperature on the new scale corresponding to the temperature of the 39 on the celsius scale on the new scale of the question what does it states we are having the new scale of the temperature that is w scale the freezing and the boiling points of the water are 39 and 239 what will be the temperature on the new scale corresponding to the temperature of 39 w on the celsius scale right 
we have seen the formula right the very basic formula that is reading minus lower most point whole divided by upper most point minus lower most point is equal to constant for all scales right here we are having the new scale that is a w scale in which the lower most point is 39 and upper most point is 239 and we have to find the reading into the w scale so simple if we are comparing the reading on the w scale minus lower most point whole divided by upper most point minus lower most point the temperature of 39 on the celsius scale that we have to measure on the new scale now the celsius scale if i am talking about in the celsius scale the lower most point is 0 and upper most point is 100 So what we are getting R minus 39 whole divided by 200 that is is equal to 39 by 100. R is equal to 117 right okay degree W we are going to get. The D is the perfect answer for this specific question. D is the perfect answer for this specific question. Mercury thermometer can be used to measure the temperature up to what? Mercury thermometer can be measured right up to the temperature what? This is nothing else but the standard data we are not going to waste the time. See I was telling in 2008 basis on this the question is asked. Right this is a standard data 360 degree centigrade. A centigrade and the Fahrenheit thermometer are dipped into the boiling water right the centigrade and the fahrenheit thermometer are dipped into the boiling water the water temperature is lower until the fahrenheit thermometers registered 140 what is the fall into the temperature as registered into the centigrade right temperature of the fahrenheit is 9 by 5 temperature of centigrade plus 32 right so that is 140 minus 32 that is 9 by 5 of temperature right so c that is is equal to uh, 108 into 5 by 9 right okay so this will be uh, 9 1s are 9 12s are 12 5s are 60 degree centigrade this will be the rise into the celsius degree Right, a very simple question of the temperature conversions. Right, a very simple questions on the temperature conversions. Now, the, uh, we are moving forward, right, to the concepts of the principle of the calorimetry. Okay, temperature versus time graph is there, but we are going to discuss it afterwards. Right, first of all, let's complete the, okay, or we want to move on to the, okay, well, I think uh, we should move on to the, right, temperature versus time graph, okay and uh, then we will move forward to the next part okay so let's discuss this thing right this is uh, just an example we are going to discuss the entire we are going to plot that entire graph right okay using one example we are going to plot the entire graph using an example right so are you all ready let's temperature versus time graph this is a kind of an attempt right this is a kind of an attempt to understand the aspects of the state transformation what kind of the aspects of the state transformation how much amount of the heat is needed right how much amount of the time the object is taking into the state transformation what are the stages of the state transformation from one to another how the heat is supply lots of things are there right this thing right? this all of this stuff right we can discuss using a temperature versus time graph see one temperature versus time graph it is there ice is at the zero degree centigrade for 25 seconds continuously it is heated at the zero degree centigrade sorry ice is at the minus 50 degree centigrade for 25 seconds it is continuously heated right and enormous amount of the heat is supplied so that it can reach to its melting point from minus 50 right so it can reach to its melting point from the minus 50 
right after that slowly 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 see the graph moves like this way now ice is converted into the water see what things are going on how they are going up we are going to see into the example right okay but right now we have to just you get, just be comfortable with this graph and then we will move on into the detail aspects of it right just move on right to what actually it states just be comfortable with the graph and then we will move on to the detail aspects of it right first eyes right the temperature of the eyes was raised from minus 50 to 0 and then state transformation occurred ice was converted into the water after state transformation again the temperature of the water was increased from 0 to 100 degree right in this entire section right no ice was present the entire ice was transformed into the water now in this water is state transformed right to steam right and finally steam is the temperature of the steam is raised and in some cases it is raised up to so high value that even it can reach to the plasma part the fourth state of the matter how we plotted this graph let's see this is temperature right and this is time we are not taking it as a minus 50 let us take an example we are taking it as a initially the eyes is at minus 30 degree centigrade first step what we need to do see first of all understand the motive of this concept right what we need to do we need to convert what is our motive we need to convert eyes into the steam right and even uh, we need to raise the temperature of the the final state right so this is our motive we are having uh, we are having eyes we have to do some procedure right and plot this graph right okay and measure the entire activity till that eyes is converted entirely into this steam so initially first step eyes is at minus 30 degree centigrade so I want to ask you all a question whether the state transformation of ice will occur at minus 30 degree centigrade no why because the melting point of the ice is zero so it means somehow right we have to raise the temperature of the ice from minus 30 to zero so that right ice can reach to that state at that point it would be capable to transform itself right into the liquid state so initially ice is at minus 30 degree centigrade slowly heat is supplied and temperature heat is supplied and temperature increased from minus 30 degree centigrade to zero so in that case graph will follow like this way right because the temperature is continuously increasing with time temperature is also increasing time is also increasing temperature is also increasing time is also increasing right temperature is also increasing time is also increasing right so the graph would be linear right so here the slope of graph that is dt by dx it is inversely proportional to the specific heat the first statement the slope of the graph that is inversely proportional to the specific heat right slope slope of any graph it's y by x that is dt by x now second step ice reached to 0 degree centigrade right ice reached to 0 degree centigrade now what will happen the 
Well, I want to ask you all whether the source has stopped supplying heat or not. No, because what is the motive of the source? You need to convert, right? Source wants to convert the ice into steam. So until and unless it is not converted into the steam, right? Source is not going to stop the supply, right? So in this case, right, what will happen initially? The ice was at 30, temperature was raised. Now the state transformation will occur. When the temperature was ice was raised, it was only ice, not water. But when state transformation will move on, for that the latent heat is needed. Now slowly, 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 slowly. See, state transformation is going on. It means it is going on at the constant temperature. We have discussed this thing earlier, right? It is going on at the constant temperature. So till T1 amount of the time the temperature of the ice was raised now slowly 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 till T2 amount of the time right okay the state transformation is going on of an ice and everything it is going see state transformation goes right at the constant temperature so everything that is going on it is going on at the zero degree centigrade while moving on from minus 30 to zero we were having only ice now when state transformation is going on, first of all, some part of the ice is getting converted into water. Slowly, slowly, more mass is converted into the water. Slowly, slowly, half of the ice is converted into the water. Slowly, 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 the entire ice is converted into the water. So in that entire phenomena of the state transformation, we are having some amount of the ice also and the water also. And finally, finally, when entire ice is converted into the water, our temperature will be 0 degree centigrade and we are having no ice now. Third stage. Is it converted into steam? No. We need to increase the temperature. Now, again source is supplying the heat and slowly, 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 slowly the temperature of the water is increased to right 100 degree centigrade. Right. Why it is increased to 100 degree centigrade? Because it is the boiling point of the water. So whenever the ice was completely transformed into the water and the temperature was increased, now we are having only water in the system. We are having only water in this system. Right. So what will happen here? Right. Now the temperature of water is increased. from 0 degree centigrade to 100 degree centigrade it is increased from 0 degree centigrade to 100 degree centigrade it is increased yes it is increased so in that case the slope of the graph that is dt by dx that is inversely proportional to right the specific heat right the specific heat of water it is inversely proportional to the specific heat of the water, right? Now, the system is at the 100 degree centigrade. The water is at the 100 degree centigrade. And now, the state transformation will occur. Now, obviously, the state transformation is going to occur at the constant temperature. And our new constant temperature is 100 degree centigrade. Now, slowly, 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 the trace state transformation is going on. In the state transformation, we are having the water and steam both. So into the fourth part, we are having the latent heat of the vaporization, right? Q is equal to ML, the latent heat of the vaporization, right? The amount of the heat that is needed to convert water into the steam. Now in that part, we are having both water and steam. After this, we are having only steam and temperature of the steam is raised. After this, we are having the only steam and the temperature of the steam is raised. So this is what the entire right graph of temperature versus time is all about. Right. So this is what entire graph is all about. Right. To increase the temperature for minus 30 to 0 degree, it needs some amount of the time. Let us say 1000 seconds. For state transformation, it needs some amount of the time. To increase the temperature of the water, it needs some amount of the time, right? Like this way, the entire graph flows on. So this is actually 
द टेम्परेचर वर्सेज टाइम ग्राफ इन टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेल्व द क्वेश्चन वॉज आस्क लिक्विड ऑक्सीजन एट फिफ्टी कैलविन इज हीटेड टू थ्री हंड्रेड कैलविन एट द कॉन्स्टेंट प्रेशर ऑफ वन एटमोस्फियर द रेट ऑफ द हीटिंग इज कॉन्स्टेंट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग ग्राफ रिप्रेजेंट द वेरिएशन ऑफ द टेम्परेचर लिक्विड ऑक्सीजन इज एट फिफ्टी डिग्री फिफ्टी डिग्री कैलविन राइट ओके लिक्विड ऑक्सीजन इज एट द फिफ्टी डिग्री दिस फिफ्टी कैलविन राइट If you are converting that into the Celsius, then it is two seventy three. So it's three one two. Sorry, three one three Kelvin, right? Now it is raised to right six hundred and seventy three call Kelvin. Though obviously, right, A will be the correct answer. Right? First of all, right, uh, the temperature will be raised up to right the liquid, the uh, what we can say the maximum threshold value of the liquid oxygen. What is the maximum threshold temperature of the liquid oxygen? There might be in between fifty to three hundred Kelvin. Up to that limit, the temperature will get increased. Then, at the constant temperature, right, the state transformation will happen, right, and after that, it will be into the final gaseous state. So, the A will be the perfect answer for this specific question. Heat loss by one is equal to heat gain by second. Heat lost by one that is is equal to heat gain by second. That is the natural. See on this principle, right? We are going to solve the number of the sums on this principle, right? But principle of calorimetry is is all about in the statement right heat lost by one is equal to heat gain by second first examples let's uh, understand some of the examples of the principle of calorimetry right because we are going to solve the sums based on it so it is um, important to understand the statement by means of examples first ice mixed with water who is at the higher temperature water who is at the lower temperature ice ice is going to gain some heat water is going to lose some heat right ice is going to gain some heat water is going to lose some heat second example Water mixed with steam. Who is at the higher temperature? Steam. Steam is going to lose a little lose some heat. Who is at the lower temperature? Water. It is going to gain some heat. So it is heat gain by one is equal to heat gain by heat lost by another third. Ice. mixed with steam who is at the higher temperature steam who is at the lower temperature ice who is going to loss its heat higher temperature steam right who is going to right who is going to like uh, gain some heat and that is ice water mixed with water but this time water at the lower temperature mixed with the water at the higher temperature who is going to loss who is going to lose some heat that is water at the high temperature who is going to gain some heat water at the low temperature right so this things are this is what about the principle of calorimetry about a visualization this shown into the visualization heat lost by one is equal to heat gain by second heat lost by one and that is equivalent to heat gain by second but for the principle of calorimetry we are having one question solving approach and that is whenever the two substances are mixed whenever two are mixed right the heat will flow from point a heat will flow from higher temperature to the lower temperature
right? So one question in my mind that I want to ask you all whether this uh, heat flow is going to stop or not. Yes, it is going to stop. Heat flow will move, the heat will flow from higher temperature to lower temperature. It will stop when both will come or both will attain the final temperature at the final temperature thermal equilibrium is attained So with the formula of the principle of the calorimetry, this will be our question solving approach, right? For the formula with the, right, for the formula, right, uh, with the, with, sorry, with the formula of the uh, principle of the calorimetry, this will be our question solving approach, right? When heat flow will stop, most probably the third point, right, it is most important and right it would be quite useful in solving the sums the third most imp right question solving approach principle of calorimetry heat loss by one that is, is equal to heat gain by another heat loss by one that is equivalent to heat gain by another right so these are some of the examples okay these are some of the examples Joule's law. Okay, we are going to discuss the Joule's law, right? But uh, before that, right, using the principle of calorimetry, yes, we are going to solve some of the sums related to it. Okay, using the principle of calorimetry, we are going to solve sums related to it. Two identical bodies, uh, see, two identical bodies are there, are made of a material for which heat capacity increases with temperature. Okay, one of this is at 100 degree while another is at the zero degree. Two identical specimens are there. One is at the zero degree, another is at the hundred degree. If they are brought in contact, then assuming no heat loss, yes, the most important stuff that we forget in the question solving approach, practically in this principle, right, the practical aspects always has heat loss but don't forget right we are going to deal we are dealing with the theoretical aspects right so in that right heat loss is never considered right heat loss is never considered okay one body is at the zero degree centigrade another body is at the hundred degree centigrade right okay They are brought in contact with each other, assuming no heat loss. The final temperature of the system is what? Most important thing. Suppose, let us take an example. This question has been asked in NEET phase 2, 2016. This is 1 gram. And this is 1 gram. Right? Suppose. Suppose. Let's understand this suppose if this material want to transform its state how much amount of the heat it is needed that is 1 gram into 80 80 calorie according to the principle of calorimetry the heat loss by one it is going to heat gain by another right so this is going to gain some heat because it is at the lower temperature right and it is going to lose some heat because it is at the high temperature if if the material that is at the zero degree and centigrade it is gaining 80 calorie then its state will be transformed but the temperature will be constant now suppose if this material has to reach from 0 degree to 100 degree centigrade, then how much amount of the heat is needed? 
only 100 calorie for 1 gram. So it means that total 180 calorie if this this material that is at 0 degree centigrade. I have taken the example of 1 gram so that it will be quite easily right understood by you all right. For 1 gram of this material at 0 degree centigrade if this want to reach up to 100 he needs 80 calorie for the state transformation and to increase its temperature see state transformation occurs at 0 degree. Now if you want to increase the temperature at 100 then additional 100 calories needed. So it means anyhow if he is able to gain 180 calorie at 0 degree immediately he will transform itself and reach up to the final temperature of 100. This much amount if he gains 180 calorie then he can reach. Now the question rise around whether this 100 degree the material that is at the 100 degree centigrade it is going to release its heat or not. It is going to release 180 calorie or not. He is in need of 180 calorie but whether he is going to lose or not. He is ready to gain but whether this is going to lose or not. Let's see. He is at the 100 degree centigrade. Now for the state transformation right for the state transformation at the 100 degree centigrade for the let us see this is also the 1 gram 540 calories suppose if it is transforming its state now it is only 100 degree centigrade by losing some heat then for 1 gram right 540 calorie he will lose what he is in need of 180 what he is losing the rice right so it means that when the one third gram of the state transformation will occur na, in that amount of heat only this object will reach from 0 to 100 what about rest in this 540 calorie he is losing an entire amount in this 540 calorie suppose at the initial position he is losing 180 calorie right so in the time he is losing 180 calorie right the zero degree in the same time the zero degree the particle that is the object is at zero degree it is reaching up to its final state still he is having additional 360 calorie to lose but now what will happen both will reach at the final temperature and equilibrium will attain he is having the capability to lose 540 he is in need of 180 he is having capability to lose but when he will lose 180 the final equilibrium state will attain right what about the rest of 360 degree it will remain as it is so it means that the final temperature of the system will be near about 100 degree centigrade why because the particle at zero needs less amount of the heat but the system that is at 100 it can it has a capability to release enormous amount of the heat in that case if this is having the high heat capacity see it's a very simple if the heat capacity that is losing the specimen that is losing if the heat capacity of that is quite high then final equilibrium will be nearer to it if the material that is gaining some heat it is of the higher heat capacity then the final equilibrium will be nearer to it second is the least possibility the first one is high so more than 50 the final equilibrium temperature will be near about more than 50 this will be the perfect answer Again, need phase one 2016. A piece of ice. Okay, this is what about the Joule's law is. But okay. Steam at 100 degree centigrade is passed into the. Okay, steam. At what temperature? 100 degree centigrade. Water. At what temperature? 
10 degree centigrade. They both are mixed. Steam, mixed, it means steam is passed through the water. When water acquires, see, this is an initial temperature of the water. When the water temperature rises to 80 degree centigrade, right? Okay. Then what will be the total mass of the water present? See, the question itself states something. According to the principle of the calorimetry, calorimetry heat loss is equal to heat gain. Who is going to lose some heat? Steam, because it is at the higher temperature. Who is going to gain some heat? Right, water. Why? Because it is at the lower temperature. The question states that water right rises its tem raises its temperature from 10 to 80. It means 80 degrees is not the boiling point of the water. It means straight transformation is not going on. Right? State transformation of the water is not going on. Only the water temperature of the water is getting raised. It means in the case of the water only specific heat is involved. Now he is gaining. Who is losing some heat? Steam. Who is losing some heat? Steam. Now, how steam is losing? As because of the temperature difference, the initial temperature difference is of 90 degree. Steam is at the higher temperature. Now steam is having no other alternative. Okay, rather than just transform itself into the water. So by losing its heat, steam will try to decrease, right? By losing its heat, steam will try to transform its state into the water. Right? But here at 100 degrees centigrade, everything is going on at the constant temperature. So it means here the latent is involved. Here there is a rise in temperature, so specific heat is involved. Here there is a state transformation is going on. Because to lose some heat, steam is not having another alternative, right? Apart from, okay, losing its entire energy. If steam is not going to lose its entire energy, then how the temperature of the water is going to get raised from 10 to 80? So here, heat gain, mass of water, Right, specific heat of water, temperature is increasing from, right, 80 minus 10. Heat loss, this is by steam, this is mass of the steam that got transformed, right, that got transformed and latent heat of the vaporization. So how much amount of the mass of the steam that got transformed into the water, right? That is mass of water 20 into 70 whole divided by 540, right? Okay. So we are getting it as mass of steam, right? That transformed itself into the water that is 2.5 gram. Initially water was 20. Whether the state transformation of water occurred or not? No. Only the temperature of the water got raised. But what about steam? Yes, the state transformation occurred. Some mass of the steam got converted into the water. So what is that mass? 20, 2.5. Initially water was having, water was, how much amount of the, this mass of the water was present? 20. How much additional mass steam gave to the water 2.5. So final when the equilibrium is attained the total mass initially it was 20 2.5 that steam got transformed into the water. So final 22.5 gram of the water is present. Right. D is a perfect answer. 2014 it has been asked. Right. 22.5 gram. So this is how principle of calorie battery is used. If one gram of steam is mixed into one gram of ice, see, steam, one gram, ice, one gram, then resultant temperature of the mixture will be what? Obviously, obviously, yeah. ice is at the zero degree centigrade, right? Steam is at the 100 degree centigrade. Okay. 
how much amount of the ice needs see how much amount of the i heat is needed for the ice for the state transformation that is 1 gram into 80 that is 80 calorie right and uh, to transform to reach up to the 100 degree centigrade that is 1 into 100 mc delta d that is total 180 calorie is needed if the water is getting 180 calorie then it can reach from 0 to 100 but if ice is going to gain something then who is going to lose steam is going to lose why because it is at the higher temperature now how much amount of the steam is going to lose right if the entire energy steam is losing then we are having 540 calorie the same sum see it is asked into 1999 same sum 540 calorie steam has capability to lose 540 but that much amount of the ice is that much amount of the heat is not needed by ice so what will happen first steam will lose 180 degree still it is having the 360 degree in its base right in its storage and the final equilibrium is attained and when the final equilibrium is attained the heat exchange stops so it means that still the steam is having some amount of energy to lose so steam has not completely transformed itself so steam has not completely transformed itself and the final equilibrium stage is attained so it means still steam is present and the presence of the steam states that presence of steam and the final equilibrium both are happening simultaneously it means that the final equilibrium of this 100 degree centigrade 1 gram of the ice cube at 0 degree centigrade are released. Sorry, 10 gram. See now, 1988 ice. What is the mass of ice? 10 gram. A release in the tumbler. Ice is mixed with the water. How much amount of the mass of water is present into the tumbler? 55 gram. At 40 degree centigrade. See, temperature of the ice right it is 0 degree centigrade temperature of the water that is 40 degree centigrade assuming that there is a negligible heat taken into the surrounding heat loss is negligible what is the final temperature okay according to the principle of calorimetry heat loss equal to heat gain according to the principle of the calorimetry heat loss that is equivalent to heat gain who is going to lose some heat water who is going to gain some heat ice now ice is already at the zero degree centigrade it means it has reached nearer to the boiling point now the state transformation will occur so here mass of ice into latent heat that is equivalent to this much amount of the heat right it will gain the water will gain right First of all, let's see how much amount of the heat, right, the water is releasing, right, water is releasing, see, water is at the 40 degree centigrade, so this is mass of water, specific heat of the water, right, this is T minus 40, where T is the final equilibrium temperature of system. At this temperature, heat flow will stop. On the opposite side, first of all, mass of ice is getting transformed, then mass of ice. But now, at 0 degree centigrade, first of all, mass of ice got transformed. Now, slowly, 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 it got converted into the water. Now, the temperature of water is getting raised from 0 to equilibrium. So, here, mass of the ice, but... Now ice is converted into the water. So we are taking the specific heat of the water. Right. Reaching from 0 to final temperature T. Right. So what is the mass of ice? That is 10 into latent heat 80 plus 10 into 1 into T. Right. Or in another sense you can write it down. Okay. With this. Okay. Then it's 40 minus T. What is the mass of water? that is 55 gram into 1 into 40 minus t 
right so it is 800 plus 10 t and that is, is equal to 55 into 40 minus 55 t so 65 t is equal to 55 into 40 minus 800 t is nearly equivalent to 22 degree centigrade right nearly equivalent to 22 degree centigrade and this will be the final temperature of this elastic behavior whether the solids are showing the elastic behavior or not whether the solids are showing the elastic behavior or not similarly in this case we are going to understand whether on application of heat or whether on change in temperature between system and surrounding whether they are going to expand or not in fifth or sixth standard right we have uh, seen one experiment of a metal spherical ball metallic ball right when it is at the room temperature it passes through rings right we uh, ring we have seen that exam okay we have seen that experiment now nah? i'm going to show you all okay suppose this is a ring right metal ball is passed through it right metal ball passes through it at the room temperature now when it is heated at some specific temperature and after that we are trying to pass through it then it doesn't happen so it means that spherical ball the radius of the spherical ball has changed the radius of the spherical ball has changed that shows the lead the expand that shows the general expansions of the solids right that shows the expansions of the solids now hmm, all well basically there are the three kind of the behaviors first linear expansions of the solids aerial expansions of the solids volumetric expansions of the solids first of all let's see this visualization and understand the linear expansions of solids see there is a fine ceramic right on heating the length of the object is getting changed see it's a very simple thing suppose right this is a rod okay kept at ti that is initial temperature right this is li initial length of the rod right it is initial length of the rod now suppose if anyhow heat is supplied and uh, right it feels a temperature difference then obviously right it is going to reach the tf the final temperature right and while moving on from the initial temperature to the final temperature there is always increase right into the length of the rod that is delta l i can define it as delta l as right increase in length of the rod if delta t see it's very simple delta t is less delta l is less delta t will increase length the change in length will increase again i am increasing the value of the temperature again the change in length will increase so somewhere right the change in length is having direct relation with the change in temperature so can i say here the change in length by original length it is having direct relation with the change in temperature thermal stress if you are aware of in our previous session we have discussed the topic of thermal stress as of change in temperature of a rod as of so as of any reason we are we, we are not interested in that part as of some change in temperature we are observing some of the changes in its length that change in its length is producing a stress this stress is not as because of the mechanical force that's why i am not naming it as a 
कंप्रेसिव थर्मल और टेंसाइल कंप्रेसिव शेयर और एनी काइंड ऑफ दी वॉल्यूमेट्रिक स्ट्रेस नो दिस इज एस बिकॉज ऑफ द थर्मल एनर्जी सो एस बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वॉट एवर अमाउंट ऑफ द स्ट्रेस इज इज प्रोड्यूस इट इज अ थर्मल स्ट्रेस एंड एस बिकॉज ऑफ दिस थर्मल स्ट्रेस राइट वी आर एबल टू नोटिस सम ऑफ द चेंजेस इन टू द लेंथ ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट इट मीन्स स्ट्रेन इज प्रोड्यूस्ड द हायर अमाउंट ऑफ द टेम्परेचर चेंज हायर अमाउंट ऑफ द थर्मल स्ट्रेस इज प्रोड्यूस हायर अमाउंट ऑफ द चेंज इन लेंथ इट विल बी मेजर सो यर वॉट एवर द स्ट्रेन इट इज दैट इट इज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल टू चेंज इन टेम्परेचर रिमूविंग द प्रपोर्शनलिटी साइन वी आर हैविंग डेल्टा एल बाई एल दैट इज आल्फा डेल्टा टी राइट वेर आल्फा इट इज coefficient it is a proportionality constant that is named as coefficient of linear expansion coefficient of linear expansion right coefficient of linear expansion right similarly if we are talking about the length right now what about the area suppose if the area of the object is getting changed let us take an example right this is an object having length and breadth right suppose it is continuously heated right continuously the heat supply right it is given obviously we are measuring some of the changes in its surface area it is delta l this is delta b right we are facing right the delta a right so here the change in area by its original area again it is directly proportional to change in temperature as you can see in, in this example right there is a one square uh, plate uh, with a hole in its as a cavity suppose if continuously the heat is supplied to it obviously right okay that uh, the area is going to increase and with that area the cavity of the hole is go also going to get increased more amount of the change in temperature more amount of the stress is produced more amount of the change in configuration and more amount of the change in area by original area so indirectly temperature is increases to the higher value more amount of the change in area is noticed so delta a by a removing the proportionality sign right okay then we are having this beta delta t right where beta it is known as coefficient of area expansion coefficient of area expansion similarly this thing is noticed into the volume simple three formulas are there and on base on that right the sums are there change in volume suppose this is a cube right okay we are having length right breadth and height this is height this is length this is breadth right suppose if we are supplying continuously supplying heat to it if we are continuously supplying heat to it then it is for sure it's a very simple thing it is for sure obviously right right the things will get change right the height will increase by dh right okay the length will increase by db right dl and db like this way the entire cube will get expand more will be the amount of the heat supply more will be the change in temperature more will be the change into the configuration notice so in another sense delta v by v right is directly proportional to change in temperature removing the proportionality sign so delta v by v that will be equivalent to what gamma delta t where gamma it is known as coefficient of volume expansion That is the relation between alpha, beta, and gamma. Then, but with that, we are going to see into the numericals, right? See now, the question based on this has been asked into the NEET 2019 paper, right? Now, first of all, let's move on to the question. What it states? So, this question has been asked in NEET 
right a copper rod of length 88 centimeter and aluminium rod of the unknown length two uh, rods are there one is of the copper and second is of the aluminium having their increase into the length right uh, okay independent of increase in temperature increase in length is independent of increase in temperature it means delta l1 that is, is equal to delta l2 so that is l1 alpha 1 delta t that is l2 alpha 2 delta 2 delta t according to the expansion of solids now it is an independent so delta t is going to cancel so alpha 1 l1 that is, is equal to l2 alpha 2 so it is length of copper alpha of copper length of aluminium alpha of aluminium what we need to calculate we need to calculate the length of the aluminium rod so length of the aluminium rod that will be length of the copper alpha of the copper whole divided by half of aluminium what is the length of the copper rod it is 88 centimeter alpha of copper that is 1.7 into 10 to the power minus 5 whole divided by 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 5 so that results length of the aluminium rod as 68 centimeter a is the perfect answer see based on the expansions of the solid the question is asked into the 2019 paper now coefficient of the linear expansion of the brass and steel rods in 2019 it has been asked in 2016 brass and steel rods coefficient of brass is alpha 1 and second it is steel is alpha 2 lens and lens of brass and steel are l1 and l2 where l2 minus l1 is maintained see they are maintained same at all temperatures it means again we are going to have the same thing l2 minus l1 it means delta l is constant for all temperatures it is mentioned into the question delta l is constant for all temperatures so it means delta l1 that is, is equal to delta l2 l1 alpha 1 delta t that is, is equal to l2 alpha 2 delta t delta t is going to cancel final we are going to get the relation as l1 alpha 1 that is, is equal to l2 alpha 2 right where it is l1 yes b is the perfect answer for this specific question The value of the coefficient of the volume expansion C is okay. See, gamma it is given 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 per Kelvin. The fractional change in its density is what? With change in see, whenever the temperature is increased, obviously we can uh, right. We are observing the change in length. We are observing the change in area we are observing the change in volume but with this three quantities always the densities are also getting changed so the relation of the change in density it is given as rho by delta rho by rho is gamma delta t right rise of the temperature is 40 degree it means delta t that is, is equal to 40 degree we have to use this simple formula delta rho by rho that is is equal to gamma gamma that is is equal to 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 into delta t 40 so that is 200 into 10 to the power minus 4 right so the fractional change in density with a rise in temperature of 40 is 0 0.020 and this is the perfect answer this question is asked in 2015 with the linear expansion volume expansion aerial expansion right there is also an expand the, uh, the value of the density is also get changed the density of the water at 20 is 998 at 40 is 992 the coefficient of volume expansion of the water is karnataka need 2013 see delta rho by rho that is is equal to gamma delta t this is a right equation of the variations of the densities with respect to the temperature right now can i write it here as 998 minus 992 
whole divided by 992 is equal to gamma. What is the change in temperature from 20 to 40? 40 minus 20. So gamma it would be 6 whole divided by 992 into 20. What will be the coefficient of volume expansion 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 per degree centigrade? A is the perfect answer. So this is how the questions are asked. Right? Okay. As it is a crash course, right? Okay. So extremely sorry that uh, we are not covering right the more amount of the questions else uh, the length of the lecture will be quite more and obviously you are right, not seeing that much. Okay. I am going to all uh, show you all an example. One simple example, right? Basically, if I am talking about there are the three modes of heat transfer. See, I am going to write in front of you all, right? So, if we are talking about the modes of heat transfer, right? Basically, right? Three modes of heat transfers are there, right? First one, it is a conduction, right? Second, that is in convection. Third, that is a radiation. Rather than to explain each and every part, the each and every mode of the heat transfer, right, individually, then I'm going to I'm going to give you all a single example, right, in which we'll explain this three of them. The basic definition, what actual it is, right? So. How many types of modes of heat transfers are there? Three. Conduction, convection and radiation. Now, let's move on to the very basic example. Suppose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 people are standing in a row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 people are standing in a row. Case 1. Right. What is our motive? Motive is one wants to transfer the information to 10. One, what is our motive, right? One want to transfer the information to 10. The one want to transfer the information to 10. Here, why I have used this word information, information in uh, directly, it sends to heat transfer. But let us understand this, right? Using an example of an information, right? Any kind of the idea exchange is going on. Or you have seen this kind of a game that is named as communication gap. Right, generally in corporates while the induction training is going on, right, while you are an intern or training is going on. So this kind of the communication gap game is always played in all of those companies, whether it is related to any it is, it is any company, it is related to any field, either it is a finance or blah blah anything, right? This communication gap uh, game is always played, right? Especially to the interns those who are those who are new in this field in the corporate structure, right? So one want to one wants to transfer transfer the information to the 10 case one what he will do one will transfer the information to two two will transfer the information to three three will transfer the information to four four will transfer the information to five five to six six to seven seven to eight eight to nine nine to ten so this is the first mode of heat transfer like that we are having an analogy the first mode of information transfer in between 1 and 10. 1 will pass to 2, second will pass to 3, third will pass to 4, fourth will pass to 5, 5 will pass to 6 like that way it will reach to end. That is the example of conduction. in between right whenever you need to transfer the heat right in between 1 and 10 always intervening medium is required medium should always be there and whatsoever if one medium is there 
it's okay if more than one mediums are there then all will be heated best example of the conduction is what very simple thing on a right in a gas stove right if you're placing a right a vessel of a water obviously for, first of all the bottom part of the vessel is going to get heat right after that any person who is going to touch that vessel obviously you are going to feel the effect of that heat transfer right the same that is a conduction in conduction mode of the heat transfer intervening medium is required suppose this is a room right okay if room wants to transfer the heat to one specific object as because of the temperature difference in between if there are n numbers of intervening mediums all will get heated this is the conduction Second way of transferring the information from first person to tenth person. Case two. Second way of transferring the information from one will select its most trustworthy candidate. Like as uh, right uh, in companies, they uh, people used to do like this way. One will select its most trustworthy candidate. Suppose the fifth one is the most trustworthy candidate. So one will select the most trustworthy candidate, and that person will transfer the information to ten. This is the case of convection. to transfer the heat only one intervening medium is needed and generally convection always uses the radiation to transfer the heat from one point to another point and the best example of this is microwave oven only one intervening medium is needed apart from that there will be no heat exchange with the remaining one so the best example right to understand the convection is of microwave oven whenever we need to cook out the bake that food right a specific food we just used to keep into the vessel right inside a microwave oven and you just to, and we always used to adjust the temperature and the timings so what does the microwave oven do? like what does it what how what is an actual phenomena going on in behind microwave oven wants to exchange the heat right between the surrounding and that food so what it will do it will use the in another sense not exactly in between the surrounding and the food but the main purpose of the micro microwave oven is to bake the food so what it will do it will use the radiation the another single intervening medium right okay and it will try to bake a food by creating that artificial environment nearby it so that is how the heat exchange is going on so that is the second mode of the heat transfer that is convection now here comes an error the first person trusted most on the fifth and passed on the very confidential information right to 10 but this time the fifth person betrayed the one the fifth person betrayed the first he broke his trust so at that moment of that time the first person decided first of all he tried from the every concerned person from the every intervening medium to pass on the heat so that the final information can reach up to the end but it got failed so he selected in the second case he selected one trustworthy person and tried to pass on the information at the end he also betrayed the trustworthy person also betrayed him now he decided now he want to transfer right without any help of any concerned person right he want to transfer the himself the information by his own so in that case what he did case 3 without any use of intervening medium one is passing its information directly to 10 without any intervening medium right one is passing information directly to the 10 that is an example of the radiation no medium is needed 
radiation can transfer radiation can move on in any medium they are nothing else but a right lay light rays some are visible some are not right everything it is all the part of the spectrum right okay some are visible some are lots of things are that related to the radiation so this is a one common example that is explaining convection conduction and radiation conduction if see what is our motive one needs to transfer the confidential information to 10 the first mode of heat transfer he will transfer to one then to third then to fourth like that way it will reach up to 10 that is conduction the second mode of the heat transfer is convection first will select any trustworthy person among all and will tell him right to transfer the information up to 10 only one intervening medium is required and in maximum number of the cases the light radiations the light rays are used as an intervening medium the third mode of the heat transfer first will select none among the entire group and you will directly pass on the information to the 10th no intervening medium is required and that is a radiation hope so students these examples might help you a lot in understanding the terms right Let's move on to the next part. Let's move on to the conduction. What actual the conduction is? Right. What actual the conduction is? See, let's take a very simple example that we have seen into the beginning. There is a campfire and we are having the glass rod. Simple. This is the first end of the glass rod this is the second end of the glass rod between these two ends of the glass rod there exists one temperature difference and as because of that temperature difference right heat flows what is the conduction the capability of an object to conduct the heat as because of the temperature difference how much this material is allowing so that as because of this temperature difference right the heat can flow from second point to the one point is it possible now how much it completely depends on my nature that how i am helping others in that critical situation that will define right how that will define my character that actually what i am conduction right conduction we have taken the example of the glass rod and metal rod right it is easy metal rod is is easy metal rod is highly capable right okay it is highly conductive like the conductivity of the metallic rod is high as compared to the glass rod whenever there exists a temperature difference between the metal rod and the glass rod obviously the metallic rod is going to conduct the high heat as compared to the glass one why is this so it completely depends on the concept of the thermal resistance that we are going to discuss within the few minutes but before that let's uh, discuss right the concept of the conduction and the rate of the heat flow right okay so the conduction states how material is capable how material is capable for heat flow as because of the temperature difference as because of temperature difference right between its two ends as because of the temperature difference between its two ends that will define its conduction glass rod versus metal rod this will have the high conductivity rate and this will have the low conductivity rate as compared to the metallic rod right okay yeah i can understand materials are different but that is a something suppose it is not a metal rod it is a rod made up of the steel things may differ Suppose it is a rod made up of the brass, things may differ. Suppose it is a rod made up of the copper, things may differ. Why? The melting point of each and every material is different. And completely the conduction depends on how material is allowing. How I am allowing a person to trespass my premises? Question mark. 
if i am allowing then i am having the good conductivity rate okay i am not considering whatever amount of the loss i will face in the future but still right as my nature is like that only i am allowing a person to trespass my own premises right conduction the rate of the heat flow again we are taking the same example suppose this is a first point and this is a second point there exists a delta temperature t right okay between the two points now here what will happen first case right okay the high amount of the heat the amount of the heat flow is directly proportional to the change in temperature why right the high amount of the heat the amount of the heat flow right that will be directly proportional to the temperature the reason for this is high will the temperature difference right high will be the temperature difference highest will be the possibility for an object to attain its equilibrium state high will be the temperature difference more the object will try to attain the equilibrium state and to for that right it will try to exchange the more amount of the thermal energy right so the high amount of the temperature difference more amount of the heat flow will takes place it's a very simple thing high amount of the area right the rate of the heat flow is also having the relations between the uh, relations with the area and the length it is directly proportional to area and it is inversely proportional to length so final equation the rate of the heat flow it is right a delta t by l right this is a natural equation and we are removing the proportionality sign right then the heat can be given as k a right uh, by l into delta t k a by l into delta t k a by l into delta t this is what the heat equation of the heat flow the rate of the heat flow right we are defining it as a heat rate of the heat flow that is heat flow per unit time right so that will be equivalent to k a right if the change is quite small it is dt by small t if the change is quite large k a by bar delta t by right so this is what the rate of the rate means what at what rate in a specific interval of time how much amount of the heat is flowing that shows its rate i am ha having a car i am having a capability to reach surat in right uh, half an hour so that is my rate in half hour i can cover 3 km 30 km right like my another car it is having the capability to cover that distance into 45 meters so it that is its rate so this is the rate of the heat flow it completely depends on how object right how or uh, how the it, the rate of the heat flow that completely depends on how object is reacting towards its heat whether it is conducting or not whether it is in high state of conductivity or not right we can compare this examples uh, right to the current and for that right uh, we have seen the example we are having the examples we are having the concepts of the thermal resistance what actual the thermal resistance is we have seen one example what k is directly proportional to area right and q sorry q is directly proportional to area and q is inversely proportional to length this heat flow actually the thermal resistance is a property right this will decide this will decide whether the object will conduct heat or not the thermal resistance will decide right whether the object will conduct heat or not high the value of the thermal resistance low conductivity low will be the value of the thermal resistance high conductivity if you have seen into the current electricity that is equivalent to l by k a it is directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to area right likewise a uh, resistance is equal to rho l by a resistance is directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to area similarly we are having the concept c in electrical circuits we are having the formula like concept of resistance that resist the current flow here in an analogy we are having the concept of thermal resistance that resist the heat flow 
in electrical circuits that resist the current flow in this circuits it resists the heat flow that is the concept of the thermal resistance now here right we are going to answer that question in a campfire when two rods were there one was having the high thermal resistance and second was having the low thermal resistance the metallic rod as compared to the glass one it is having the less thermal resistance and it allows more heat to flow along it the name itself states that thermal resistance what it states it states that how i am allowing the heat to flow through the body l by k a right in electrical circuits we have seen this in this we have seen this now in electrical circuits we have seen the parallel and the series combination of the resistors and the current was flowing the same we are going to see here right the series and parallel combinations of the rods the combinations to find the equivalent thermal conductivity right okay equivalent so let us take a very simple example this is rod 1 if two rods are connected in series right one is having thermal resistance capital k1 second is having thermal resistance capital k2 right i think there will be in problem of a symbol let's take an example one is having the thermal resistance of r1 second is having the thermal resistance of r2 now if this two rods are connected in series right here it is in t1 so first point as because of temperature difference as because of temperature difference between two right that is t1 and t2 as because of the temperature difference between two that is t1 and t2 obviously heat flows now when this two rods are connected in series one junction temperature is produced right now how we are going to calculate the equivalent of this okay now in series just keep one thing into the mind when two rods are connected in series rate of heat flow among the rods is always same rate of heat flow among the rods it means that whatever amount see suppose t is a junction temperature whatever amount of the rate of the heat flow is there between t1 and 2 the same amount of the rate of the heat flow will be in between t2 and t1 so it is dh right in between t1 and t that is equivalent to dh in between t and t2 the rate of the heat flow will be equal in another sense can i say dq by dt right in between t1 and t that is equivalent to dq by dt in between t and t2 replacing the values right okay replacing the values we are able to calculate the junction temperature right so first the calculation of the junction temperature and then we are going to calculate the k equivalent right so here the junction temperature it is defined as k1 a1 by l1 temperature difference t1 minus t k2 a2 l2 temperature difference t minus t2 using this formula we can calculate the junction temperature we can calculate now how to calculate the effective thermal resistance of this combination can i compare this two rods as the two resistors like this way of an electrical circuits one is having the resistance r1 if this two are connected in series and rate flow in electrical circuits current flow was equal and here the rate of flow is equal it means r equivalent that is is equal to r1 plus r2 this is l equivalent by k equivalent a equivalent that is l1 by k1 a1 plus l2 by k2 a2 this is the general formula right to find the equivalent right k conductivity 
right to find the equivalent k right to find the equivalent k using this now suppose in this case right in some of the questions some identical situations are always there right suppose the cross section area of the both two rods are equal the length is equal and lots of things are there right so in that case we are having the special case we can formulate this thing and evaluate to get the final results but this is a general formula l equivalent by k equivalent right what about when two rods are connected in parallel suppose this is a rigid wall this is rod number one this is rod number two right this is having conductivity k1 area a1 length l1 this is having thermal conductivity k2 right area a2 and l2 this constant it is known as conductivity right sorry i forgot now suppose between this two walls right there exists a temperature difference t1 and t2 now with this the rate of the heat flow now here the temperature difference is same right the delta t is same for both of the rods right delta t is same for both of the rods and if you want to calculate right see according to the concept if they are connected in parallel then 1 by r equivalent that is, is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 now the concept of the thermal resistance states that its formula is l by k where k is a thermal conductivity right replacing this we are getting k equivalent a equivalent whole divided by right l equivalent k1 a1 by l1 k2 a2 by l2 so this is a general formula right to find the equivalent value of the k when the rods are connected in parallel right equivalent value of the k when rods are connected in parallel so here we are having the two cases right first we define the rate of the heat flow right after that we define the thermal resistance after that we have seen the two concepts one that is in series and second that is in parallel now conduction is uh, right limited up to this much part only in this lots of the question variations are there right the foundation part is that much only right the foundation part is that much only now there are some basic laws and formulas see this chapter is quite easy maximum direct formula based questions are there whether it is related to the conduction whether it is related to the radiation or it is related to any expansions of solids or anything some of the formulations are there and so first of all rapidly we are going to see uh, right the there are three to four laws three laws are there three to four definitions are there in radiations and things get over and one concept of black body radiations if questions come into the examination comes in examination is what we are going to discuss within the few minutes after the explanation of radiation right okay then you, you will you will completely you will get all of this stuff that right uh, when, when i will discuss this pyq right you will immediately and then you will have a click in your mind that only the direct formula based questions are coming into this right in examinations from this now what is the radiation as we have discussed this is the third mode of the heat transfer right so what actual the radiation is right harmful rays which are not visible from an object but affects highly to the human sun very harmful rays are coming from the sun but maximum of the harmful radiations are getting absorbed into the ozone layer right that is formed at the top of the earth right any object right any object right in an universe it is having a tendency to emit some light 
some might are releasing the negligible some are having the high temperature so they are releasing the high wavelength of the light some might be are visible some might be are not visible but maximum number of see radiations it means that whatever any any object if it is capable right to emit some radiation right again okay, those who are quite harmful for the human health generally we are defining it as a radiation right now in radiation right okay related to see radi radiation is one of the mode of the heat transfer na? in conduction we saw na, how heat transfer is going on right we saw the rate of the heat transfer we saw the uh, this one the thermal resistance part so in conduction we saw each and every aspect right how the heat transfer is going on now we are going to see how heat transfer takes place right right uh, in the cases of the radiation before that i want to discuss right some of the important definitions into the radiation the first one that is the emissive power the first most important definition into the radiation emissive power states that energy per unit area per unit time that is defined as emissive power any object any body that is having capability to radiate an energy in another sense radiated energy per unit area per unit time shows the emissive power of that specific object second definition spectral emissive power is it not for sure right that every object is having the capability to release the light of all wavelength right of an em spectrum some more body is having some kind of the limitation at that point the spectral emissive power is defined for a specific range of the wavelengths right the spectral emissive power is defined as for specific range of wavelength in another sense emissive power of specific range of wavelength per unit lambda in another sense if you want to understand into the quite simplified form spectral emissive power is an emissive power of a specific wavelength of a light or a wavelength of any right wavelength of a light rays or any rays which is not visible right okay so first is an emissive power generally it is defined for a specific wavelength of uh, in an in, in, in an electromagnetic spectrum then it is right we are defining it as a spectral emissive power after that right comes the emissivity emissivity defines the ratio of right the ratio of emitting power of any material right how the material is emitting the radiation the ratio of how a very simplified manner ratio of how the materials surface right is emitting a radiation to right the emission or you can say to the uh, right a perfect emitter this is an emissivity for black body emissivity is always considered as one for black body emissivity emissivity is always considered as the one 
right it means that right a perfect emitter is perfect emitter right now what is an emitter what is in reflectance power what is in transmittance power what is an absorptive power everything we are going to discuss right within the few minutes but before that these definitions are must right okay what is a perfect emitter and everything what is a black body we are going to discuss and three is laws related to it okay so now let's move on to the next part reflectance power absorptance power and transmittance power let us take an example right this is a surface right the high value of the q is incident on it high value of the energy is incident on that surface now it completely depends on the surface whether it is a good emitter whether it is a good absorber whether it is a good reflector mirror is a good reflector when you are standing with the mirror in front of the sun obviously it is going to reflect the entire enormous right the maximum amount of the energy is it going to absorb something yes mirror is going to absorb but it is up to the very negligible amount it is going to reflect yes it is a good reflector yeah mirror is going to reflect the entire maximum amount of the energy is it going to transmit something no it is a bad transmitter it is not having castle cast the mirror is not having any yeah it can absorb some amount of the energy it can emit the magic can reflect the maximum amount of the energy but it can't transmit there is a difference between if you are transmitting right and you are reflecting reflecting it means if x person is giving you something you are giving to the y you are a reflector transmitting means you are the source and you are emitting something so that is a difference so then always used to get confused in between this two right that is the difference so here foreign surface three possibilities are there right either it can transmit the q amount of the energy either it can absorb the q amount of the energy right or either it can reflect the q amount of the energy now what is the reflectance power the reflectance power that is is equal to r amount of the energy reflected to amount of the energy incident what is an absorptive power amount of the energy absorbed to amount of the energy incident what is a transmittance power amount of the energy transmitted by amount of the energy incident right the summation of this three power is always one the summation of all this three powers is one you can see there are some radiations that are incoming from this right and slowly 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 things are getting right some of the part is getting refracted see we right now we are not moving on to the refraction scattering and all of this now from the radiations point of view and from this chapter's point of view whatever it is needed we are going to discuss that part some amount of it is transmitted some amount of the things are right okay some amount of the thing is reflected and some amount is absorbed right now with this right we are having the three important stuff the first one is a stephens law before that let's okay let's move on to black body you all are aware of right black body i don't think right we are going to waste the time using right uh, we are not going to waste the time right on the discussions of the black body right black body you all are aware of now what does the stephens law states the emissive power of any material surface of any material surface is directly proportional to the fourth power of the temperature high is the temperature high is the emissive power high amount of the energy it is he is having the the material is having the cap the material surface is having the capability to radiate the high amount of the energy 
or in another sense if it is capable to radiate the high amount of the energy it means that the temperature of that material surface is quite high best example sun sun is having the high amount of the temperature that's why it is having the high capability to radiate that energy and that's why right sometimes in some of the theoretical aspects we are comparing right the sun not as a perfectly black body but as a black body because for a black body right for a perfectly black body emissivity is always one so what does the stephen's law states it states that the emissive power of any material surface it is directly proportional to the fourth power so can i say emissive power is directly proportional to the fourth removing to the proportionality sign we are getting one constant right and that is the stephen's constant but first of all let's replace this formula so here it is energy radiated per unit area per unit time that is sigma t to the power 4 so here can we say the energy radiated that is is equal to sigma a t to the power 4 now this is energy radiated per second energy radiated per second energy radiated per second right now this is right for the black bodies right this is for the black bodies where emissivity is one we have discussed the definition of emissivity what does it state it states the ratio of any emission of any material of surface or in a summarized in a very simplified form right we are comparing the emitting right or emission power of any surface to the perfect emitter that ratio is emissivity so this is for the black body but if we are defining the general case then energy radiated is equal to sigma a emissivity t to the power 4 right for perfect black body emissivity is 1 for perfect black body emissivity is 1 then this is all about the stephen's law right this is what all about the stephen's law so uh, the value of the stephen's constant is sigma is equal to 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 si okay so this is a stephen's law now af after this we are having the veins displacement law right okay it tells us suppose if we are talking about any emitter right having the surface temperature as t if we are talking about any right uh, temperature and then an object right that is having the capability to emit the radiations right okay so that is having the surface temperature t what does this Wien's law tell us right it tells us the wavelength emitted from the surface is inversely proportional to surface temperature the high will be the surface temperature the less value of the lambda lambda in then em spectrum will emit it the high value of the surface temperature the less value of the lambda right will get emitted the low value of the surface temperature right the high value of the lambda it might be possible that it is it can be visible right removing this proportionality sign we are having b by t okay this is nothing else the but a wheels law the direct formula based questions are there right direct formula based questions are asked in this and yes uh, about the value of the right about the value of this b then it is b is equal to 2.89 mm dot kelvin approx approximate it is equivalent to right now this is only the part of the radiation is and then let's see some sums related to it and finally we are going to revise this stuff okay the power radiated by the black body is p and it's radius the maximum energy at wavelength lambda zero if the temperature is body is now changed so that it radius the maximum energy of the wavelength three by lambda zero then power radiated 
it becomes np right okay see it's very simple thing we are using GUI. this question this question is asked in 2018 okay we need to find some relation between the energy and wavelength in another sense this question is the combination of stephen's law and wayne's displacement law. energy is directly proportional to t to the power 4 right similarly temperature is inversely proportional to lambda so in another sense energy is inversely proportional to lambda to the power 4 can i say e1 by e2 that is equivalent to lambda 2 by lambda 1 whole to the power 4 right okay so here the power radiated e2 that will be equivalent to 256 by 81 of e1 and comparing this to n e1 we are having the value of n as this way c right replacing this value first we are going to replace as lambda 0 and 3 we are going to replace it at 3 by 4 lambda 0 right okay 3 by 4 lambda 0 right 3 by 4 lambda 0 okay you can see uh, see directly uh, formula based question is there let's move on to the next question two rods see now this question is based on the conduction and this is asked in the 2017 paper two rods uh, a and b of the different materials are welded together as shown into the figure that thermal conductivities are k1 and k2 the thermal conductivity of the composite rod will be parallel connection see this side temperature is t1 this side temperature is t2 see direct parallel connection it is right so in parallel connection if i'm talking about the thermal resistance it is 1 by r1 is equal to 1 by r equivalent that is 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 right i'm going I'm, I'm talking about the thermal resistance replacing the value it is k equivalent a equivalent by l equivalent that is is equal to k1 l1 a1 by l1 plus k2 a2 by l2 now see length of the both composite rods are same and if they are connected in parallel then l equivalent is also equivalent so it is going to be same so this is going to be cancelled right now we are having k equivalent right into a equivalent as k1 a1 plus k2 a2 now area will be twice of the individual this is a this is a area will be twice of the individual so can i replace a equivalent as 2a into k equivalent that is k1 a1 plus k2 a2 then this a is going to cancel then we are getting the value of the k equivalent as k1 plus k2 whole divided by 2 direct formula based question is asked and it is recently asked in 2017 paper past five to seven years paper plays the most important role because if i'm talking about the neat level of question then since five to seven years it is changing rapidly drastically it has changed right before 2017 we were not expecting the questions of calipers and screw gauge from units and measurement but this time we are having right this time we are having so lots of differences are there right now let's move on to the next question a spherical black body right okay within radius of 12 centimeter see radius r1 that is 12 centimeter radiates a power of 450 watt direct formula based question from the 2017 right 450 watt power at 500 kelvin t1 that is, is equal to 500 kelvin if the radius is half then temperature is doubled radius is half right temperature is doubled then the power radiated would be very simple power is directly proportional to area t to the power 4 right so it is e1 by e2 that is is equal to r1 square by r2 square t1 to the power 4 t2 to the power 4 right so we are having e1 by e2 that is equivalent to what is the value of r1 r2 is r1 by 2 so it is 4 r1 will get cancelled out and temperature is getting doubled 2 whole to the power 4 so e1 by e2 that is is equal to 4 whole divided by 16 e2 that is is equal to 4 of e1 right initial power is 450 right so final we are getting e2 as 1800 watt right c is the perfect answer direct formula based question 
need 2017 right so from this chapter right it doesn't means right this chapter is i'm not saying it is that much easy sometimes logical questions are there but that will come from the graph based question and integration based from questions from the thermodynamics that will come from this chapter direct formula based questions are there a black body okay this thing you can do right it's phase one this is a homework from my side you can answer this question right beneath the video and to the comments a piece of the iron is need 2013 a theoretical based question a piece of iron is heated in the flame it first becomes dull red then becomes a reddish yellow and finally turns to white hot the correct explanation for the observation it is given by see 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 colors are getting changed it means wavelength is involved and whenever the wavelength of a radiation is involved with the temperature see piece of the iron rod is heated it means heating it means somewhere temperature is involved with this heating the color is getting changed becomes dull red then becomes reddish yellow and finally turns to white so with this color the wavelength of the radiations are getting changed so with this wavelength and temperature if this kind of thing is there then we are having only one law wien's displacement law right direct question a black body has the maximum wavelength lambda 1 that is is equal to lambda m right at the temperature t1 that is is equal to 2000 kelvin its corresponding wavelength at the 3000 kelvin or it's a very simple see 2000 okay it's a very old but it's okay direct formula based questions are there sorry t2 it is 3000 right t2 is 3000 right so in this lambda is inversely proportional to temperature lambda 1 by lambda 2 that is is equal to t2 by t1 so that is is equal to 3 by 2 so lambda 2 that is is equal to 2 by 3 lambda 1 right 2 by 3 lambda 1 okay p is the perfect answer for this specific question direct formula with direct use of the wien's displacement law Uh, this thing you can do. This is a homework from my side. Now we are going to see one sum related to the composite rods. This is also you can do. Okay. Consider the compound slag consisting of the two different materials having the equal thickness, right, and thermal conductivities K and two K respectively. The okay. Ah, uh, this thing also you can do. It's not a big deal, right? Yes. right this thing you also can do right it is not a so uh, students thank you thank you thanks for your cooperation will be uh, right for all of those stuff so guys uh, this was all about <coughs> uh the heat transfer the thermal properties of matter i will be waiting for all of your comments beneath the video right so guys it's time to go again we'll come back with the uh, thermodynamics and the uh, ktg right so guys this is indrajit singh your own physics educator signing off from the desk bye bye sat sri akal and namaste from my side bachcha ji bye everyone stay at home stay safe stay healthy amidst this pandemic bye bachcha ji